Hey, what's up everyone? Morty Croson here, and today we're going to be breaking down Noah Lyle's 1931, and we'll start the video right now. This is the newest edition of the Performance Lab. Reach your individual goals. You don't want to just talk about straight line speed. We also want to talk about your ability to be quick. We break down your video. Let's make you into the quarterback I know you can become. All right, so this was a huge accomplishment yesterday. We got Noah Lyles running the 1931 in the 200 meter final. We were actually uh, live during this actual run. Uh, we'll also be going live tonight for the 400 for the men and women. So if you wanna go ahead and check that out, all you need to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications so you can know when we're gonna be going live. But we got Noah Lyles here. We'll go ahead and hop right into the video. He is in lane six. It, it, it seems to me based off of this, performance that lane six is really his go-to lane excellent job of getting out you could see how quickly he was able to catch up to to Fon Boulay, how fast his turnover speed is here Fon Boulay really has got to work on his start really has got to work on his turnover he has a hard time and being able to get his feet out in front as well as be able to get his feet to be able to land uh, with more of his weight on like the front third of his foot and that ends up being a big problem for him if he wants to really compete at the highest level he's got to be able to fix his start that's just something that he can't do over and over again and it's something that we're, we're seeing time and time again where he he goes he does a great job against more of like the amateur runners on the collegiate level things like that which is great but when it comes to being able to compete at the highest level he's going to have to fix some of these mechanical things in, in order to uh, really give himself a chance the big rivalry here was between noah lyles and arian knighton uh, and the big thing that ended up happening with you know, Arian Knight, and it's tough when you're in that, that third lane because that, that ends up just being a lot sharper of a turn. So for Noah Lyles, he was able to maintain more of that top speed we saw in the U.S. Championship that uh, Noah Lyles ended up, I mean, Noah Lyles was a little bit more outside of him even on that one as well, uh, but he, he wasn't as clean in the curve. Uh, this time, Noah Lyles was able to maintain a great position into or through the curve. And, and once we everybody saw this right here, Right, where he was out in front of the field. Uh, I mean, everyone kind of knew that there was no way that he was going to end up uh, losing just because, I mean, no one, we haven't seen anybody catch Noah Lyles from behind, uh, at least in the last few years uh, in the 200 meter, right? The only thing he's been able to do is catch other guys. Maybe if Fred Curley was in this, it would give it a little bit more of a potential for, you know, him to be able to come back. But based off the field here, uh, Kenny Bigneri, Arion Knighton, even Fambule haven't shown to be able to catch him from behind. You can see Fambule did go and catch up to uh, really everybody, right? He almost was able to squeak out third place right there at the end and started off, you know, when he came around that curve, he was in what, like sixth, maybe seventh place here and was able to catch everybody and pass everybody. So it's not an issue of Fambule having not enough top speed. He really has great top speed. He just needs to be able to figure out how to get that start going. But, but yeah, I mean, looking into Noah Lyles, I mean, just a great job of being able to. And one of the things that I, I talk a lot about when it comes to being able to land is, is wanting to keep that heel facing more straight back. But it, it's shown that when you're doing that curve, where you want to be landing with that foot more right underneath the, the hip, right? So we can see this position. Like, this isn't a great position to be in when it comes to running in a straight. But that's what makes the 200 meters such an interesting thing is you have to be able to have a little bit more adaptability there, right? Being able to land a little bit more on the outside part of the foot, have that heel facing more inwards, but still be able to, to generate a lot of speed there. And then once it gets going and gets into that top speed, I mean, again, this is where Noah Lyles is really able to excel. Again, we, we see him landing really on that front third of the foot. Okay, so a common thing that people talk about is you gotta be dorsiflexed, right? We see a lot of people that teach like, you gotta be dorsiflex with the foot. And yeah, you can see in these position, he is, he is dorsiflex, but notice right before that foot hits the ground, he goes and really strikes the ground hard to make it so then he gets power into that next step. And that's what, what really separates the top sprinters is can, how far forward can you land? Okay, and then how well can you stabilize that and transition right back off? And, and the better you can do that, the better you are as a sprinter overall. So that's something that is huge, right? Also being able to get that leg to land as straight as possible. Okay, so see how straight he is right here? And he's pulling that leg back underneath, trying to lay, land as straight as possible to maintain that strength or that, that straightness, right? So see how when he lands, limited amount of bending. You wanna be able to absorb very tall. That makes it so then you can pick up adequate amount of distance per step. 
And a lot of that has to do with core strength. A lot of that has to do with how you're syncing up with the arms, okay? Because if, if your arms are off, then that makes it very, very difficult to properly strike the ground to be able to really maximize force there. Now we can see this. I love being able to see the, you know, not no allows running from the side because he's so unique in being able to get a ton of flexibility in his knee. And it even looks like to me, He's a little bit from an anatomical perspective. He has long bones within both his femur and really to me is his tibia. His tibia seems really, really long uh, compared to like the average person, right? So from his knee down to his ankle, like that bone looks really, really long. So very easily he's able to get that heel to come right up to like his butt height, right? And like for me, I like if I got in this position, my heel would be closer to like right here, okay? and everybody's going to be a little bit different, right? We can see uh, that area nine also has a pretty long tibia overall. And this helps in being able to really reach out with those legs. Now, it also could end up being a detriment, right? So it also could make it so it's a little bit more difficult to be able to stabilize, a little bit more difficult to be able to control. But if you are able to control, if you are able to, to understand how to get the foot out in front and land with that leg straight, it could be a great thing to help you in being able to pick up more distance per step, right? Because here, it's very easy for him to be able to get vertical forces because of that lower part of the leg, okay? Because now you're gonna be able to pit, you're gonna, when you're pushing off, it's easy to go here. Now you just have to be able to work on driving that leg through as fast as you can. So if you can get the timing of coming forward with that leg and you already have a long tibia, that really makes a big difference in being able to run faster. So just some interesting things to be able to, to take note of. Either way, we're seeing foot landing up underneath the hip. We're seeing an upright body within the spine. We're seeing somebody that has strong arms, strong back, strong lats, strong, uh, everything in the upper, upper body is strong, right? But he has great timing with when he gets to this position, coming right back through. I see all the time people that are looking to get faster, they're getting stuck in either bringing their arm all the way forward, bringing their arm all the way back. You have to be very, very coordinated. Once you get to that end range, being able to go right back into the, the next action, right? So whether you're trying to bring your right arm back, left leg or left arm forward, right? When you can't be stuck here, we have to be able to be very fast and being able to come right through because that's going to coordinate, right? We can see that right arm here is coordinating with that left leg to be able to come through. If those, if the timing is off, that makes it so you're not going to be able to run as fast. So make sure that you're working on that timing. We're looking at this in a very, very slow motion way. And so it allows us to be able to catch any small differences, any small problems. And again, this is something I see is a big issue. A lot of times no allows doing it perfect, but I see a lot of times people are, are off with their coordination of their arms and with their legs. And when you're trying to run faster, it makes a big difference in how you're striking the ground, the amount of force you're able to strike the ground with, and then what is the amount of distance per step that you're going to be able to uh, get to. So when you do all that, when you make all that coordinated, it makes a big difference in how you're running. So again, if you like the information, go ahead and click that thumbs up down below, subscribe to the channel. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos. I'm always doing breakdowns on the top sprinters in the world, some of the top races in the world to help you guys understand what are they doing to be able to run at such high speeds. I mean, 21 or sorry, 1935 or 1931. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 1931, I'm getting uh, Sharika Jackson and no allows messed up a little bit there. So, because Sharika Jackson went 2145. So, uh, no allows 1931 American record, right? One of the best runs ever, third fastest all time in the uh, 200 meter. Made a huge statement as being the best in the world currently at the 200 meter, undoubtedly. There's only a 0.4 win on this. So uh, a big, big statement, and I, I think it's only going to go up from here. You know, he's just really one of the cleanest runners that we see. I, I want to say that he's going to probably want to go back and compete at the 100 meter. He, he looks as good as he's ever looked, and I, I mean, I, I can't wait to be able to see him continue to, to excel and do some big things. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Check out the description down below if you're looking to find out a little bit more about what we do and how we can help you in improving your speed. We have... Uh, different resources available where you can get breakdowns. You can do programs. We have a, a few different free things. Those will all, again, be down in the description down below. We have some great offers available there. So uh, again, let me know if you have any questions and we'll talk to you soon.